Welcome to the Complete Discipleship Evangelism 48 Lesson Course by Andrew Womack and Don Crow. Level 1, Lesson 12 Integrity of God's Word by Andrew Womack. Mark 4 is a tremendous chapter about the integrity God's Word has the power, the character, and the faith in it. There were at least 10 parables taught during this one day. You have to compare Mark 4 with Matthew chapter 13 and Luke chapter 8 to come up with that. There were a number of parables, one of which was about the sower sowing seed. In Mark 4 verse 26, it says, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. Remember that in verse 14 it says, this seed is the word of God. God isn't really teaching you how to be a farmer, but is using a natural thing to illustrate spiritual truth. Verse 27 says, and should sleep by night and rise by day, and the seed should sprout and grow, he himself does not know how. Now, I believe that is important. It says the man does not really understand. He does not know how this is happening. Some people say, I just don't understand what you're talking about. How can reading the word of God really change me and cause God's life to come alive inside me? I don't totally understand it, but I know it works. I don't understand how you can put a tiny seed in the ground and have an entire stalk of corn come up with ears of corn on it and reproduce a hundredfold. Nobody fully understands it, but it works. And I tell you that this works. Reading God's word and letting it begin to saturate you changes your attitude, your experience and your perceptions. Verse 28 says, For the earth yields crops by itself. The earth was made to incubate seed and to germinate and release that life. Your heart was made for the word of God. It really was. God's word was created to be placed in your heart. Just taking a Bible and holding it close, putting it on your coffee table, or carrying it with you doesn't have any virtue. It doesn't release power in your life. You have to take the word, make it a seed and plant it in your heart. When you do that, your heart is designed to bring forth fruit of itself. It will automatically change the way things work in your life. The verse continues, first the blade, then the head, after that, the full grain in the head. This implies that there are stages or steps to growth and maturity. People come to me all the time expressing that they are believing God for something really good, a godly thing I can agree with. But if they have never done anything, if they have never led a person to the Lord, I can guarantee they aren't going to have a television or radio ministry within the next few weeks. You have to do things in steps. There are stages to receiving from God, and that is what this parable is illustrating. First of all, you have to start, and then comes the hope, and then the faith, and then it produces results. There are always steps to victory. No one is going to go from zero to a thousand miles per hour all at once. Though it may be a godly desire, it isn't going to work that way. The scripture is showing that the kingdom of God is like a seed. The word has to be planted in your heart and growth comes in stages. First the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. The next verse says, But when the grain ripens, immediately 
He puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. There are stages, but eventually there will come a time of fruitfulness and maturity. The point is made in verse 35. On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. Jesus had been teaching them all day about the power of the word, how the word is like a seed and how it will release God's life into your life. He had been teaching them this in at least ten parables. So here he gives them a test. He tells them, All right, here is the word from the Lord. Let us go to the other side of the lake. He didn't say, Let us get into the boat, go halfway across the lake and drown. But let us go to the other side. Then he got into the boat and went to sleep. The story goes that a great storm came and water filled the boat. You have to remember that this was not a cabin cruiser with berths below deck where Jesus was dry and didn't know what was going on. It was an open boat and Jesus was asleep, sloshing around in the water. The reason this was significant is because he knew what was going on, but he was still trying to sleep. The disciples got upset, came to him and said, Master, don't you care that we perish? In other words, they were saying, do something. Get a pail and bale water. Row, do something. You are not pulling your weight. Many times people do the same thing with God today and say, God, why haven't you done something? God has done something. He has provided everything we need through the atonement of the Lord Jesus. He has produced his word and given us all these seeds. It is our job to sow them into our hearts. He has given us the scripture and it is our job to take the seed, put it in our hearts, and meditate on it until it releases life. But the disciples wanted to wake Jesus up and say, Why don't you do something? He got up, rebuked the wind and the waves. There was calm. Then he turned around and said to his disciples, Why are you so fearful? How is it you have no faith? He didn't say, hey guys, I'm sorry, I should have done something. No, his part was to teach them the word and give them promises. And it was their part to take the word and believe the promises. God has provided everything through Jesus coming to this earth. He gave you everything it takes to succeed in every area of your life in seed form in the Word. All you have to do is take the seeds of the Word of God and plant them in your hearts through reading it, meditating on it, thinking on it, and letting it take root on the inside of you. As you do that, you will be able to stand up and stop the storms in your life. I believe God's best was for these disciples to take the teaching Jesus gave them that day and say, let us go over to the other side. They could have said, according to everything he taught us today, this is a promise. This is the creator of the universe who said, let us go to the other side, not let us go halfway and drown. They could have taken that word mixed it with faith and rebuked the wind and the waves. That is exactly what Jesus said. O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? You know what? We need to believe God's word and act upon it. Let us now take this opportunity to pause and reflect on the lesson by considering some questions. Suggested scripture readings will first be read, followed by the question to be answered. 
A pause is then recommended to allow time to meditate on the scripture as an individual or to discuss as a group and formulate an answer. Finally, the suggested answer will be given. We read Matthew 13 verse 19. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received seed by the wayside. Question. If we do not plant God's word into our hearts, what will happen to it? Answer. The wicked one will take it away, so it cannot produce in our lives. We read Joshua 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Question. When should we meditate on God's word? Answer. Day and night. We read John 6, verse 63. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Question. According to this verse, God's word is what? Answer. Spirit and life. We read Matthew 4, verse 4. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Question. Mankind should live not by physical food alone, but by what? Answer. Mankind should not live by physical food alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. We read Ephesians 6 verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Question. God's word is like what kind of weapon? Answer. A sword. Question. Can a sword do damage to its enemy? Answer. Yes. We read Romans 8 verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Question. When we give proper place to God's word in our lives, we will have what? Answer. Life and peace. We read 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Question. What we set our attention on is what we become full of. What should we set our focus on? Answer. The Lord and His glory. Thank you for joining me and taking part in our lesson. This lesson is one of many steps on a learning pathway taking you deeper into discipleship and relationship with the Lord. And now, stay tuned for our next lesson.